Hello, my friends. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And we've been doing trade videos like cray cray. We just did JT Miller. We did uh, Capo Caco. Awesome one on Capo Caco. We did also a free agent one on Malkin. All the great players out there that look like they could be available. We've been doing trade videos and free agent videos on and today we're going to be looking at Philip Forsberg from the Nashville Predators. Oh, one thing I got to tell you about this. This is all one take off the top of my head. Boom. So if there's any mistakes in this, it's okay. Tell me about it. It's the way it is. Um, I had one guy say that I couldn't, uh, you said this or this and it was not right or I didn't say a name right or something. I couldn't listen anymore. Well, do you think people that edit these things and spend all day editing get it right or know everything? They don't. So I just don't edit it out. If I make a mistake, I make a mistake. So what? All right. Philip Forsberg. Interesting situation that's going on there in Nashville. We're going to look at two articles, okay, that kind of give us an indication of which, sort of give us an indication of which way it may go. As it stands right now, I'd say it's 60% chance he's going to leave, 40% he's going to stay from what I'm hearing so far. Might even be higher than that. Uh, we'll look at the reasons why I think that. We'll look at the articles themselves. And then we're going to look at five teams that would have some serious interest in Forsberg, I believe. And you can tell me what you think. After you sub up to my channel right now, so you can be part of this fine frolic and comment in the comment section and tell me what you think of all of this. And we're also going to look at Nashville themselves and the possibility of him staying there now before I go into it there's one big reason why I think he should stay but I don't know that it is it's an indication that normally a player would stay and that is that they didn't trade him at the deadline I mean I why why would you not trade a player that you you're not sure of and they're quite obviously not sure and get some really good value for them at a deadline just because you're a bubble team and you want to make the playoffs to make some money in make some playoff and TV money. And I think that is the answer. I just think Nashville really needs this. And it's coming out right now that they're selling the team. It sounds like the team's going to change hands. So yes, it would have made total sense in that situation then because the owner would like to make some TV money on his way out to sell the team to somebody else, you see? Right. So it makes sense. All right. We're going to look at, okay, let's look at Forsberg, what's going on here. And uh, I'll give you a kind of my insight as to what I think is going to happen. You can tell me what you think is going to happen. And the frolic will be endless, all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. If you like all the sports and all the teams in there, don't let the name fool you. It's about every team. It's not a Flyers site. It's an all-teams, all-sports site. Go check it out. And the NHL Pearl of Wisdom Show, which is on a bit of a hiatus right now as hockey season is wearing down. But we'll be getting it back again. And that's me. I do a whole lot of NHL content that is uh, to do with uh, that on, on other channels as well. Peyton on the radio, Off the Wall Hockey. John, go check them out. I do analysis for their play-by-play -play all the time. And I do my own live streams whenever I feel like it, too. At when I feel like it o'clock. All right, let's look. Okay, Forsberg says he would like to come back to the Senators. And you say, well, that's it. See, Forsberg said his goal is to go back. So why even do in this video? Well, because every player says that. <laughs> The ones that leave and ones that stay. I don't doubt that Philip Forsberg, you know, would like to. He says all the right things. The goal is to come back here, Forsberg said. The business side is a completely different than the on-ice side. Wow. 
We'll just have to wait and see and let it play out. Like, I'm not part of this at all. Look, uh, this is what I don't like. Uh, this is, or sorry, this is a red flag to me. When a player basically just kind of says it's not up to me, which is pure nonsense. It's pure nonsense. Just because you have an agent, your agent doesn't tell you what to do. All right? Your agent doesn't completely say, okay, uh, call you up and say, okay, you're not staying in Nashville. You're going somewhere else. I'll tell you where, when that comes up. That's not what happens. The player has the choice to do whatever it's going to do. It's about the numbers, okay? So to me, that's a red flag. Because when a player basically tries to remove himself from the situation, quite often it's not heading in a way that means he's going to stay with the team. He know he has it in the back of his mind that it's quite likely that he'll move on, and he doesn't want to piss off his fans. He wants to make it seem like it's hey, it's not up to me, man. It's a business. I just gotta, well, you know, well. It's not true. It's not true. I understand why they do it, but it's not true. Uh, there's been some negotiations, of course. He says, uh, I've been fortunate enough to be on this team for a long time now. We've made the playoffs almost every year. But at the same time, every player plays to win a Stanley Cup. So do I. That's my biggest goal. I do believe we have a team that can make that in the future. I think that's the direction that a team has to be heading, and I think we are. Okay, those are nice words. Good for you, Mr. Forsberg. Glad you said that. Uh, I mean, really, what does that mean? Do, do you, uh, does he believe that? I suppose. Is there a reason to believe that? I'm not so sure. Um, but the, when it comes right down to it, it's a business. So guess what? There's other teams that are going to make the playoffs. There's other teams that are on a trajectory to do so. There's other teams that are like right there that are contenders right now that you could be on there. So he basically goes on and says that I can't give you a way. No, uh, you know, I'm not going to give you too much on negotiations. There's been progress and blah, 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 blah. That's what it says. And then they talked to Josie and he said he's a big part of our team. Such a great player. I played with him a lot of years. I'm a good friend, and of course I'll talk to him, but here's the big one. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we know it's a business. So when he leaves, it's just a business, everybody. Don't be mad. It's not Forsberg's fault. Right? Right. Okay, so here's another one. And by the way, where was that from? Oh, that was from the NHL. Uh, who, who's a writer? I should prop him. John Glennon from NHL.com. Actually, I don't know much about John. Should read more of his stuff. It was a good article. Uh, and then now Michael Gallagher from the Nashville Post of all places. Uh, Predators. Okay, this is a really interesting. This is from the Nash, National Post. Again, com good communication uh, was what Poyle is saying about trading about the possibility of Forsberg staying. Uh, here's a couple things that are very important about this article. It's in Forsberg has asked for a contract with an average annual value of $9 million a year. Okay, going to remember that. Because if he's asking for $9 million and they're humming and hawing about this, and apparently there was also a, uh, he was very upfront about this. Now we want to surround him with, so basically he says they're looking for 9 million and there has been difficulties around his no trade, the no trade aspect. Um, he's only given a no trade twice. Here it is. Poor. Poyle noted that parts of the no movement clause, which he's only given to two players, he doesn't like NM no movement clauses, and I don't blame him. I don't like him either. It was an important piece of the negotiations as well as the final dollar amount of the deal. So they're they're not on the same page as far as no movement clause, which I imagine he wants an ironclad one. 
and also on dollars, which is $9 million a year. Okay, I don't, this is not an unreasonable, without going to all the other teams out there and showing you directly, this is not an unreasonable amount for a guy. We're going to look at right away what his points and everything are. For what he's done for in his career, $9 million a year is not, that, uh, is not an unreasonable amount. And if, that, if they're having difficulty with this $9 million point dollar amount, it's not very, it doesn't make me very confident that they're going to be able to get this done. And as far as the no movement clause, okay, maybe he bends to a 15 team no trade list or something like that. But the fact of the matter is, if he goes somewhere else, he'll get an ironclad NMC. But the other thing we need to know about this is, on the market, he probably gets an ironclad NMC and about $10 million a year. So when we look at these other teams, you're looking at $10 million a year. Is Forsberg worth $10 million a year? Might be on the high side, but he's worth what the market allows. He's a 40-goal scorer. Somebody out there that has a cap space is probably going to pony it up. They don't grow on trees, my friends, especially when you need one right now. If you think you need one right now. So um, the value is in the fact that you can't find them out there. It's not like they're all, it's not like you get an opportunity, you get a 40 goal score like this, who plays well defensively all the time. So then he goes on to say that we have worked out a plan if Forsberg does sign and if they don't sign. If Philip doesn't sign, What's the next stage? Well, maybe there's more players to add, maybe a different style of player to add. Things should change, but we certainly have a plan A and a plan B. So in other words, they don't know. They, they're already thinking about what to do with Forsberg doesn't sign. So this is on the edge, my friends, I think. And from what I'm hearing out of all this, when I hear a player say, it's a business, it's a business, it's a business, it's a business, usually those players don't end up staying where they are. So, okay, we'll look at Philip Forsberg just to see what we're getting here, and then we'll go to all the other teams. 84 points in 69 games, 2021-22. He is 27 years old, uh, which is still fairly young. This is another reason why he could get pretty big dollars, because he's still very, only 27 years old. There's a lot of teams that are going to be interested in this guy. Uh, he's, this was his best point production of his career, which is a bit of a red flag because it was a contract year and he had this best production. So I, I think if you're a team looking at this, you're probably not looking at him being the 40 goal scorer, although he is continuous 40 goal scorer, because almost always when it player has a career year, he very seldom reaches that again after he signs a contract. Not always, and he could, because he certainly got the talent to do so, especially if he was on a super talented team on top of it, then he probably would and more. But more than likely, he's a point-a-game guy in the 30-goal, you know, he's had a couple 30-goal seasons, 25 to 30-goal range. Now, is that worth in itself, $10 million a year? Probably not. But when you consider the fact that you may never get another 40-goal score fall in your lap again, it almost, it, it doesn't almost seem to matter what the overall market is because it's so hard to get a guy that's even capable of scoring 40 goals. Very, very hard. Not to mention, and he's great defensively. He's an overall, he's, he's, a, he's a captain type of material guy. He's amazing. He's a great, great player. All right, let's look at the teams that'll be interested now that we've gone over this, assuming he's on his way. The first one I'm going to look at just makes me sick to my stomach to think that they even have a chance at this. The Colorado Avalanche. And they have some cap issues coming up. They got to sign McKinnon, McKinnon, which is going to cost them about $13 million. They already got Ranton at $9 million, and a couple of years down the road, he's going to need a new contract. They got Landeskog at a beautiful deal. Um, and they're going to have to fill out their roster with other guys. 
However, right now, they do have 25 million in cap space and they can still sign some of these guys and not sign other ones like Nazim Kadri, for instance, would be on his way if they were to do a deal like this, which he might be anyways. Because as good as Nazim Kadri was this year, I don't think Joe Sackick's is going to throw seven years to a 31-year-old at nine or nine, $10 million a year. However, more inclined to do so to a 27-year-old that, like I said, remember I said that if he were to play on a team, we'll look at the depth chart here, with the talent of Colorado, I'm sure could score 40 again. So Andre Barakowski is up for free agency. We're going to let him go. Forsberg slots here at $10 million a year. You've got JT Comfer in the middle right now. Of course, Alex Newhook is probably going to take that spot. He's looking like just unbelievable. And as he progresses, you're going to have Ranton and Newhook if you do it this way. And uh, Forsberg as your second line. Are you freaking kidding me? You can still sign the Chuskin, which I would, $5 million a year. Uh, you know, maybe you bring back Lekkonen. I think you probably could keep him under the cap. And then everybody else you just kind of fill out as you can. And you've got yourself a dynasty level. And then you still got young players that can come up and take spots. Like Ben Myers showed pretty well at the end of last year. Uh, Martin kaut has been working his way up through their uh, organization for a while. He looks like he's going to be a bottom six type guy. Um, you know, they still have young players that can come up and play, which is insane. Like, it's just insane. Kiefer Sherwood's played before. He can play him. Ranto Sampa, almost. Sampo Ranta, Ranto Sampa. Which one is it? Sampo Ranta, I think it is. He almost made the, he almost made the team out of camp this year. So, I mean, he's a year older. He's probably going to have more of an opportunity to do so. So they got an embarrassment of riches, and they could. They could do this deal, man. What do you think, Colorado Avalanche fans? Do you think they're going to go, like, just cray-cray? I, I know there's going to be cap difficulties down the road, but we're talking about a dynasty here. If they happen to win the Cup this year, and it's a possibility that they could beat Tampa Bay, and you get Forsberg on top of it. By the way, I'm pretty sure Forsberg would be strongly – inclined to head Colorado's way. He just mentioned, as we saw, if you've been watching the whole video, and I don't know why you wouldn't have been, uh, that, you know, his main focus is to win a cup. Well, if they already won a cup, and you're looking at this roster, you're going, yeah, I'll come over to Colorado. It would be insane. Yeah, yeah, I don't even know how any other team could compete with that top six, with the defense they're bringing up and everything. Oh, my God. It'd be insane. What do you think, Colorado fans? I would do it. I know it's going to hurt you somewhere down the road as far as salary cap is concerned, but you're talking about winning cups here. We're not talking about winning cups five years from now. We're talking about right now. Getting like three in a row. And doing that would probably do it. All right, next. Philadelphia Flyers. And I hear the Philadelphia Flyers screaming, we don't have cup room. We don't have cup room. We can't do that. Blah, 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 blah. So why do I put Philadelphia Flyers in here? Well, one thing, they just hired Tortorella. You don't hire Tortorella if you're going to rebuild this team is not even thinking about a rebuild. Forget about a rebuild. Philadelphia is never going to do it. They're probably going to never win a cup, but they're never going to rebuild. I'm just, but if, you, if, I, if I sound like I'm angry, sort of am, because Philadelphia is my team in the East, and, and they should have been rebuilding, but they're not going to. So forget about it. Do they have cap space? Nope. No, they don't. They only have $5 million in cap space this year. Right here. $5 million in cap space. So what do they do? How do you get Forsberg? Well, you trade Scott Lawton. You don't need him if you got Forsberg. You probably got to uh, buy out Buy out James Van Riemsdyk. That'll give you, I think I, I looked it up. I'm not going to show you here, but it was about, or you'd have 1.5 on the cap this year, 2 point something on the cap next year. 
and they have five million already, that would be enough, but they're capped out. But it would be enough. So let's see what that would do with their team now. Uh, Fairby, Couturier, Atkinson, if you wish to go that way. Forsberg, Hayes, Konechny. Now this is assuming he's willing to come to Philadelphia, and it's going to cost you $10 million a year for eight years until he's 35 years old. Simple as that, okay? Uh, but if you're not going to rebuild and you're just going to be a bubble team and then hope the hell that you know, catch lightning in the bottle and Carter Hart goes off and gets you to a final or something like that, this is what you got to do, man. There's no reason why you have a Scott Lawton in your top six if you're going to do that. None whatsoever. Uh, James Van Riem's like, but yeah, who cares about it? Who cares about them? You got Tippett. Hope that you got young players that can come up. I mean, Morgan Frost jumps up. I doubt it, but you never know, I suppose. Uh, you know, Jackson Cates and Bobby Brink comes up and fills out your roster. You know, you got to catch lightning in a bottle a lot of ways the way they're going. The direction they're going, it's going to have to happen anyways. But with Forsberg, you're, not, you're more likely to do so. And you might as well give them the ironclad, no movement clause, everything. If this is the direction you're going, do it right. If you're going to be a bubble team, make sure you make the playoffs every year at least. And Forsberg will probably do that, and Tortorella will probably get this team in there. Uh, I will mention that the uh, – I will mention that I do think Tortorella can get this team into the playoffs because he got Columbus teams in the playoffs that had no business being there. Also, watch out how much better Carter Hart does under Tortorella. Tortorella has a history of doing fantastic with goaltenders. Look at Bob Roski. As soon as he left, God, he was no good. As soon as they fired Barry Trot, or uh, sorry, Tortorella in Columbus, Corpusala was useless because he always wasn't very good. He just works systems around their goaltender to make them look as good as they possibly can be. Give them the best advantage. And he'll do that in Philadelphia. They'll be a way better defensive team. Score a couple extra goals, and Forsberg can do that. And this team makes the playoffs. Do they may win a cup? Highly unlikely. But you make the playoffs every year. Sponsors are happy, I guess. Whatever. Uh, tell me what you think, Philadelphia Flyers fans. Would you do Forsberg? Are you happy with the direction Philadelphia Flyers are going? Uh, most, a lot of Philadelphia Flyers fans, what they just say to me is, well, you're just, you're just so negative. Why can't you just be positive? Because I'm looking at the trajectory of a team and I don't like it. I'm not doing that just to be, I'm not negative. I, I talk about all the teams in the NHL like I do the Philadelphia Flyers and the Edmonton Oilers who are my other team. I'm not negative about every team. If I wasn't, if I liked the way Philadelphia Flyers were going, I would say and be very positive. If I don't, I'm going to be negative. That's it. So I could be wrong. Absolutely. Just so happens, I sell to them. Um, okay, let's uh, look at the next one. And Philadelphia Flyers fans, comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think. All right. New Jersey Devils. New Jersey Devils have cap space uh, for sure. Yes, they have a lot of people that they're going to have to sign in the future here. Some of them they don't want to sign, like I believe we'll look at when we look at their depth chart. Um, but why would they go after Forsberg? Well, one, they need some for, some really good veteran forwards. And I stress the word good veteran forwards. They went out and got Tatar last year. And, uh, I mean, he's a veteran, but he's not really a good veteran. So he helped out to a certain extent, but I think they need a veteran to be able to run their top line. And I think New Jersey thinks that. And you'll say, well, they're rebuilding. Well, they're not. They shouldn't be too far into there, there shouldn't be too much rebuilding left here. Whether you like their roster or not, this is get pretty much what their roster is. Jack Hughes, Bratt, Forsberg, Zach, I think, is on his way out. They'll find some. They'll probably try to get a defenseman for him. 
Uh, Sharon Govich can go down with Heischer and uh, Dawson Mercer. And there's a lot to like about that top six. Lots. And it's a deep team. I love the way Jesper Bonquist is progressing. Kalkinen looks like he's going to find himself in the bottom six role. I think they could use some more really tough grinding guys that can play good, play well defensively. That's their biggest problem. I'm hearing a lot, well, we need defensemen. Just because you allowed a lot of goals in doesn't mean your defense is the actual defensemen are the problem. I think team defense, especially in their bottom six, is their biggest problem. And yes, Forsberg doesn't solve this. But also, a pure scorer is a problem. And Forsberg is that. Brat is the closest thing you have. Forsberg would add another one. And I think that's also why Pavel Zaka is not, they're not really interested in re-signing him. He's more of a passer and he just is not fitting in this lineup. So the top six would be rounded out. Then you just got to fill out the bottom six. That's one of the easiest things to do. Miles Wood should be coming back and healthy this year. That'll help out a lot. I really love the way Jesper Bokris is progressing. Um, and you can add some bottom six guys. That's not too expensive. You can find some really good ones out there. Um, as far as the defense is concerned, Graves and Severson. Severson, uh, he gets a lot of crap. He's an offensive guy. He's good offensively. He's not great defensively. I give him, but he's not a bad defenseman. He's, he's not bad for what he is. And Jonas Siegenthaler took a huge step up last year. Dougie Hamilton's a beast analytically. It's, it, people say he's got bad defense. Really? His expected goals is amazing. Like, he, yeah, he might cough the puck up every once in a while because he's an offensive guy too. And sometimes you're going to, you know, take a few risks that don't work out for you. But overall, his defense is fantastic. Um, and then you got Kevin Ball, who actually is progressing amazingly, more than I ever thought he would. And then Ty Smith is still trying to figure it out. The biggest problem they have is with goaltending, which they'll have to take care of as well. But you still have more cap room. You have some tradable pieces to be able to acquire a goaltender. But if you have an opportunity to get a Forsberg in this, a leader, it's time for a real true leader to lead this team and help Jack Hughes do so, I believe. A veteran guy to help Jack Hughes be the true leader he can be. And I really think New Jersey will be interested in Forsberg. Tell me what you guys think, New Jersey fans. Sub up to my channel. Comment in the comment section. Let me know. What you think about that. And if you disagree with me, I'm totally cool with that. You can even disagree with me harshly. Call me whatever you want. I'm a big boy. I don't care. If uh, I'll let anybody know who wants to sub up to my channel. If you are a type of person to uh, get offended, I won't say easily because people don't even know if it's easily or not. I'll say at all. If you get offended at all about hockey stuff, this is probably not a place for you. Because I don't care what you say. And I'll take it. You can call me whatever you want. I'm fine with that. As long as we can go back and forth and you don't go whining off to your mommy. Okay, next. Vancouver Canucks. The reason why I have Vancouver Canucks here, for the most, the biggest reason why I have the Vancouver Canucks here. And I know Vancouver Canucks. Again, like Philadelphia, we don't have the cap space. We don't have the cap space. But they're already working on things to possible trades. JT Miller is not a for sure. In fact, it doesn't even sound like he's a for sure. In fact, I'm hearing from a lot of places that Brock Besser, who's a restricted free agent this year, and JT Miller are on their way out. They are looking a different route. What's his name? Arvid, the, the general manager. Um, is probably going to want to set his team the way he wants it. He's a Swede. Vancouver loves their Swedes. Oliver ekman Larson, uh, Elias Pettersson. So, what's their cap space first before I go on with this? $10 million in cap. And he's still got to sign JT Miller and Besser. Here's what I propose, my friends. All right, what's going on?
There we go. Let me like this for a while. Okay, here's what I proposed. They're not, Brock, Brock Besser had a bad year last year. His father and his had issues privately, but he, he wasn't doing all that great before that. He's making, what, $6 million? 5.8, so he's going to have to be qualified at about 6.5 just for a qualifying offer. And the, I'm hearing that he won't sign a long-term contract, which is never good for a 25-year-old or 25-year-old guy in the organization. Um, like I said, his father uh, apparently got sick, maybe even passed away. He's from Minnesota. I think it's pretty likely he wants to go back to the United States. He's not going to sign in Canada. You know, especially, and it makes sense, especially if his father did pass away, be closer to his family and all of those sort of things like that. I think he's gone. That's, I could be wrong, we'll find out, but I think Besser for sure is gone. JT Miller um, had one big year. I, I think he's going to overprice himself out of Vancouver. I don't think they're going to pay him on a 99-point season when he hasn't come close to that before. And I think there's other teams that will be more interested in that. And this is a team that wants to set their way of doing things. Forsberg at $10 million a year is much better than JT Miller at $10 million a year. There's much more assurance that he's going to be like that. And they love their Swedes. Okay. <clears throat> Elias Pettersson's going to need a contract. Or sorry, he's set up for a contract for a while. But he will need a contract after that. How much more is Elias Pedersen going to want to stay in Vancouver if they got a freaking legend like Forsberg playing beside him? I think quite a bit. And how much do you think Forsberg is going to want to play with a guy like Elias Pedersen? You got a Swedish combination here that I think would be very palatable to Forsberg. Also, Vancouver's a beautiful, beautiful place. If you ever get a chance, go. BC is just stunning. It's a stunning place to live. So I could see it just with, you know, the Sedins and all the Swedish flavor that's happened in Vancouver. Over the years, uh, Swedish general manager, not to say that that itself is uh, it's a total indicator, but I think it has something to do with it. I think Swedish, just like anybody else, people like to be around people that they identify with. And I don't know, I could just see it happening. So you'd have Forsberg, Tanner Pearson, if you want to keep him around, that's fine. For a bit, that's fine, whatever. Uh, Pedersen gets the number one center spot again. And that's another reason why I think JT Miller is going here, is they want Petter this to be Pedersen's team. and Or Peterson, Pedersen, whatever you want to say. I've heard it both ways. He changes it up all the time just to make fun of us, I think, because I don't think he cares how you say his name. JT Miller is a big voice in the room. And if they want Peterson, Peterson, Peterson to be, you know, the guy in that room, JT, he's not going to be that. In J it's going to be a friction between him and JT Miller, I think. So you trade JT Miller, you get a nice package of young players, right, and prospects. You trade Brock Besser, the same thing. And you can find the guys that you want to build around Forsberg and Pedersen and build this team from there. I, I do not doubt it. And you can get some defensemen because they need defensemen big, badly. The Oliver ekman Larson deal was terrible. Uh, you know, this team was destroyed by Benning before them. Uh, Tyler Myers is overpaid, although he had a better year than he's had for a long time last year. Um, uh, Quinn Hughes is great, but besides that, there's not much here. So they're going to have to work on getting defensemen. Because you, know, you bring Forsberg in, that, that'll help bring in other players if you need it. And uh, because people like to play with great guys like Forsberg. And then they can trade the other guys and improve their defense and build this team into what they want it to be. Tell me what you think, guys. A nice leader like Forsberg to help Pedersen become the leader that they probably want him to be. And Bo Horvat, for that matter. Bo Horvat's going to be the captain, of course, still. But Bo Horvat's a kind of captain that leads by example. He, it, it's really a benefit to have a guy like Forsberg with him as well, to combine with him 
to bring up other aspects of leadership as well. So I like the deal. I think Vancouver would be very interested. What do you guys think out there? Sub up. Tell me what you think about that. Sub up and comment on my YouTube channel about it. All right. Detroit Red Wings. And does anybody love Swedes more than friggin' the Detroit Red Wings? I don't think so. They got, and they have a lot of Swedes coming up. Like Bergen, Pontus and Andreasen, who's working. The, both of those guys look like they could make the roster. Soderblom, Albert Johansson on loan right now in Sweden. Simone Edvinson, Philip Larson, Swedes, 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 Swedes. They love their Swedes in Detroit. And is it about time that Dylan Larkin had somebody there that has been around a little more to help him lead this team? He's always going to be the captain. He's a great captain. I'm not saying take the captaincy away from him and all that sort of thing like that. They're working on a deal with him, and I'm sure he wants to know the direction this team is going. I think it's time for Detroit to stop. It's not rebuild anymore. It's time to get contender status here soon. They got so many prospects coming up, like Edmondson is going to be a beast. You got Maurice Sider, who's probably going to be in North Candace for quite a few years. Philippe Hironic is a very underrated, solid defenseman. Um, and great defenseman coming up that should be ready right away. This team is ready to blow. Like I said, they love their Swedish players. Forsberg is a legend and would you know, one of the reasons why, and you say, why do they love, people love their Swedish players? Swedish, in Sweden, family is huge there. They, they are such an enormous, they are a huge family type uh, uh, country. They believe in family a lot. They take time for their family and their work days and stuff like that. It, it's, it's big. And they build a family wherever they go. And they act like a family wherever they go with each other. What better way to build a team than have that type of culture? And bringing in Forsberg, I think, would just take that to a whole nother level for Detroit. Not to mention, they would all of a sudden, I believe, be at least the bubble team this year, maybe even more. In the next three, four years, this team will go off. Lucas Raymond, I didn't even mention him, also a Swede, is a beast already, and he's just going to get better and better and better. Do you think he would get even more, even better if they had somebody like Forsberg that he looks up to to help him along and become even better of a player? I think it would. <laughs> Big time, I think it would help him a lot. So I love it. I love it for Detroit, and I think Detroit would be all over it. Now the question is, do you want to pay him $10 million a year? That's the problem because I think that's what it's going to take. However, unlike – all the other teams here, it may not. It may just be the no movement clause in $9 million a year. Might do it simply because there is so many Swedes on this team. And this team is so ready. It just seems like such a perfect fit. This would be the team, I think, if he doesn't stay in Nashville, that they would go, that is most likely where he would go. I kind of did these in order, by the way. Tell me what you think, Detroit fans. Do you agree with me on this? Do you think a lot of people are like, no, just stay the course, own our own grown. A lot of people just like their homegrown guys. They hate the idea of another team coming out, another player from another team coming over. It's like saying that we're not good enough. Well, Stevie Eisenman doesn't go making trades all that much, and he usually doesn't bring free agents all that much except for like, Small little ones, not usually big plays like this. But this is one that I think would just work perfect for them. All right, finally, we'll look at the Nashville Predators. Do I think this is the most likely place? I think it's about, I think it's, I think it's po very possible that he just stays here. But it's going to take a no movement clause from Hoyle. My question is, is does this team want to spend $9 million for the next eight years for Forsberg? Or do they want to build their team? They have an identity on this team. Nashville's identity is 
one of the hard, like they go to battle. And you can say whatever you want about Hines, but through the regular season, this team battled every game, almost too much. They don't have the star power to win games with star power, and that's what makes it tough because they wear out by the time playoffs come. But if they can keep their depth, basically what I'm saying is not a team that can afford to pay superstars, and maybe that's what they're thinking here. They can take two players at $5 million a year and fill them in the roster here. And we already looked at it. Go look, watch the whole video here because I look at the words of Poyle saying he has a plan B. And maybe that involves getting guys that play a different way than Ponesburg. What does that mean to me? It means that they have offense, but they're not pure offense. And they play like, the Granlin, who who is so underrated in his uh, determination in the way he plays both ways, uh, you know Johansson, Tanner Janot, great example. I'm talking about guys like that. They're going to fill their roster, their roster, with heart and soul guys that can put in some points, but aren't the ones that are going to be the scorers on the team. I think that might be the way they're going here. I think they might be going the direction of having three lines that can score, three lines that can play well defensively, three lines that can beat you up in the corners, three lines that can do all of it. And I'll tell you, maybe even four. And if you've got all four lines that can do that, you got a solid team and you don't have to give, give one player a whole crap load of money. And, I, and, and that might be the best way to do it with a team like Nashville. That, you know, really once they get one, they don't have, they can't really go to the cap every year. They got to add at the deadline, maybe to the cap and stuff like that. They don't have the dollars. Now, you're getting new ownership, I think, and that may change. But as it is right now, I think that's a possibility that that's the way they're going here. Tell me what you think, Nashville fans. You sign Forsberg up. You've got Roman Josie already. He, I mean, he's your superstar. So, um, defense could still could use some help again, which is weird with Nashville. You wouldn't normally think that. I don't think Jeremy Lauzon is your guy, to tell you the honest truth. And there's not much depth. So, they're going to have to work on that in that regard. And this would give them money to do that. So, all this being said, do I think Forsberg is going to stay? My answer is no. I don't think so. I don't think there's enough drive for Nashville to have it happen. I really don't think Poyle wants to give him a no movement clause till he's 35 years old and get trapped because Nashville can't afford to buy out players. Or right. um so and they have to have trade ability. If a player starts to dip, they can't afford bad contracts on this team is what I'm trying to say. They can't afford it. Um they, they can't spend to the cap all the time. It's it's worse for them than it is almost any team. So my thinking is that it probably doesn't happen. Tell me what you think, Nashville fans down there. And, uh, geez, that was 40-some minutes. Woo, that was a long time. All right, that's my full 42. I better get out of here. I wasted a lot of your time. Well, no, you value. You, you watched every minute, didn't you? Have a great day, everybody. Say bye.